Hello. Olá. Olá, Paula. <risos> Oi, Filipa. Olá, Silvia. Hi. Um, ok. Hello to everybody that is watching. Before we start, I just have to say that the videos are all on at the Hangar online website until one or two hours after the talk. So if anyone wants to go and watch, and also that the chat is turned off, but that we can receive questions through the Q and A. And, and that's it, basically. So, okay, I'm Paula. Um, I'm Rare, and I did curate the Intrepid Visions exhibition at Angar Online, and I'll be moderating the, the conversation between myself, Cesar Cardoso, who is an artist from Cape Verde, and Filipa Cesar, who is an artist as well. I will just do a short introduction to the exhibition. Um, Intrepid Visions uh, comes from a challenge from Angar to revisit a project that I did in 2014 that was called Ilha de São Jorge, where basically um, a number of artists from the Portuguese speaking African countries were asked to um, develop new pieces, movies in response to the theme of how uh, modernity or modernism was dreamed, absorbed, rejected, dwelt within the context of these countries. Um, it's been a while since, since the project first uh, came out and uh, revisiting these films, especially in the context of today, it really gives us new light into some of the issues that um, were raised in the films from ideas of uh, dwelling uh, within the space of the house uh, addressed by the films of René Tavares to um, you know the creation of new imaginaries, surreal readings of futures of the city of Maputo to um, films such as the Concrete Affection by Kilwanje, where the city of Luanda is completely empty. Uh, a vision that at the time was very surreal, but somehow today uh, uh, we managed to be confronted by that. And, uh, and so today we're going to be discussing two uh, very, very interesting pieces as well. Um, Uma Cabana from Filipa Cesar, um, and also Beton from Cesar Cardoso. So to start with, I, uh, I was today watching again the two films, one against each other. And, and one of the interesting things about them is that both of them deal with rituals. The, and Suleiman B.I., the film is, is made in yes. collaboration with Suleiman B.I. It's important. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry, Filipa and Suleiman B.I. Uh, and so I was watching the two films today uh, again. And, and one of the, the interesting things that sort of came across is that both of them deal with rituals of construction, but pointing out to very different um, than social conditions and outcomes. So I will ask both Filipa and Cesar to just start by talking a little bit about the process of these pieces, how they came about. Um, so yeah, it's up to you now. <laughs> Go ahead, Philippa. <laughs> Can you start? Okay. Um, I actually I wanted to start, and I wanted to start by telling you that I actually have a little message from Suleiman because we are trying to get him here, but he doesn't speak English. Mm -hmm. He only speaks Spanish and Creole and Mandinga and multi-ethnic language, but in Portuguese, of <laughs> course. Um, but he doesn't speak English, so he is not included here. But anyway, I think a lot of people that speak Portuguese could actually also hear his message because I think it's very interesting. He just send me a, a, like a WhatsApp message, and we can, in the context of the of the conversation, maybe introduce like five minutes of it because it's interesting. 
Um, so this, this project, from my perspective, I think we have, it's interesting to hear it from his perspective, uh, um, was initiated actually by um, your proposal, Paula, to ask me, uh, that was in the time working a lot in Guinea-Bissau through the archive, uh, through the process of uh, digitizing the archives and animating the, the archives of the liberation struggle um, that uh, I uh, invited Suleiman Bi, that was one of the filmmakers that was very um, intensely involved in this process, to um, to think about the architecture and how could we, um, if we could do something with the little budget we had, and uh, and to do a, a film that really reflect, you know, uh, we wanted to reflect traditional architecture in the context of the liberation movement that was also a modern process and how it actually were happening, you know, how construction was happening during the war in Guinea-Bissau and how uh, there were uh, forms of, of, of construction that were recalled, like traditional forms of trans tra construction that were recalled from, uh, from the, from, 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 from the old times, you know, into the, 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 the pressure of constructing during the war. So in this, uh, with these ideas, we started to think and also understanding the means we had. And Suleiman said, we could actually build a house. I mean, we could also build something that we need and we would think uh, about the process of construction. We would think about how construction was being made in the times of during this 11 year war in Guinea-Bissau, uh, war of liberation against uh, Portugal, Portuguese occupation, and how that would come together, you know, by also by learning by doing. So it was a little bit this proposal, like how could we learn from the past by creating something that could be useful also in the present and in the future. And so it was based, so the, the, the way actually Basically, I was the one that took care of bringing a, a, a small team, also because it was very difficult to get a team and, and equipment in, 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 in Guinea-Bissau at that time, also in the time of a coup d'etat, another one. So uh, we decided to, to, to bring um, a little team of one person for sound, one for, for image, and then uh, Suleiman was organizing in his own village uh, from his family, um, also where he's actually one of the regulars, I mean, someone that kind of moderates um, and regulates the discussions between several uh, villages in, in around this village. And he basically prepared um, the architecture and also the whole team that was building, uh, that, that built, you know, so we were building, uh, we were shooting and we were reflecting about the construction and the history. So everything at the same time within 15 days. <laughs> Just a first intro, I think we can go on. And after I'd like to show Suleiman's uh, uh, modest uh, yeah. message. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. No, I was just going to say, sorry, that we also have, um, um, I forgot to say in the beginning, we have a, a short, part of each of the movies that we can then just run uh, as we continue. But go ahead, Cesar, please. Yeah. Now, for me, the, the CD and the placemaking is, uh, is present in all my work. But this, this um, little piece, Beton, was made just by watching these construction workers uh, moving the, this ritual, this very intensive uh, human labor, uh, the way the the amount of time they spent uh, building um, building uh, big projects or their own uh, their own houses or walls or whatever. Um, so um, at first, I, I just I just start to record this this body ritual, but then um, then uh, I, I I became 
I, I have started to thinking about this body, uh, which is very much invisible in the city, yet is very present. Uh, uh, it's uh, everywhere. Uh, it's massive, but it's, it's, it's a kind of invisibility, invisibility too. So for me, um, it, 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 it became a very dear project because it allows me to think about this, this uh, person, this body, this very... And, and it, it allows me to, to think about the, the working conditions and, and the life of this, this person, this body, the visibility of this body. So, um, and now, now it's... Now it's a full-time project. Now I want to continue because I, I look at the city in different ways, but with this project, Beton, specifically, specifically Beton, um, I started to, to, to be much more concerned about the body, the person, the worker. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes, I was just going to ask Marcella to show a little bit the, the video from the, the small bits of uh, Philippe and Suleiman's film. And then I think that you can introduce Suleiman's message and, and we'll sort of yeah, expand the conversation. I'm <laughs> Aja, <laughs> I'm going to play the five minutes of um, Suleiman B.I. this just half an hour ago. Mas o mais interessante é a relação que este trabalho criou em nós. Quer dizer, duas pessoas aparentemente de quadrantes diferentes, mas que aparentemente é, se revêm um nos outros. Mas também pode ser uma coincidência. Eu e ela, quer dizer, a Filipa, somos, de alguma forma, resultados de um processo comum. Quer dizer, tivemos ou temos a consciência de um processo histórico que há bem pouco é, aconteceu entre a Guiné-Bissau e Portugal. Quer dizer, o processo de luta de libertação. Então, isso permitiu com que os dois coincidimos numa coisa. Porque realmente quando a Filipa mostrou interesse em ver os materiais do processo de luta de libertação de Guiné-Bissau, 
principalmente quando viu a cabana onde o primeiro presidente da, da República da Guiné-Bissau Independente, Luís Cabral, começou a receber os primeiros diplomatas. E, para ela, isso foi uma coisa surpreendente. Ela pensa em realizar alguma coisa desse gênero e então convidou-me na qualidade de uma pessoa que trabalha no Instituto, se eu tivesse algum interesse entrar em, em conjunto com ela. Ela disse sim. E então, assim começou o processo da cabana. Então, o, o projeto avançou e onde, é, depois de alguns atrasos, devido à questão política mesmo na Guiné-Bissau, e então foi possível é, fazer o filme A Cabana. Porque realmente foi uma, uma experiência interessante. Eu, na qualidade de um dos realizadores, permitiu adquirir mais uma outra forma de, 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 de ganhar experiência, quer dizer, como trabalhar com as pessoas, como organizar as pessoas, quer dizer, criar uma relação entre os trabalhadores na construção da casa e a equipa de filmagem. Criou um ambiente de tanta confiança ao ponto de, quer dizer, no filme, a câmera já não, 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 não impede o avanço do trabalho. Quer dizer, ela mesma transformou-se, quer dizer, a câmera transformou-se mesmo, mesmo num instrumento de um carpinteiro ou de um pedreiro que, com, mesmo com a câmera, trabalha. Quer dizer, independentemente da posição da câmera, ele continua o seu trabalho. Quer dizer, a câmera chegou um momento em que fez parte do, 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 do material de trabalho do, do, dos obreiros. Isso, quer dizer, demonstra que criou realmente uma uh, confiança entre a equipa técnica e os obreiros. E até mesmo a equipa técnica transformou-se no, no instrumento de trabalho dos, dos obreiros da, da, da casa. Quer dizer, isso tudo para demonstrar que, de facto, uh, durante o processo da, 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 da filmagem, o ambiente que se, vive aí, que se vivia, quer dizer, eu era um ambiente de confiança, tanta confiança em que nem os obreiros impediam a Câmara de trabalhar e nem a Câmara impedia os, os obreiros a trabalhar. De facto, para mim, a cabana não é só um filme para ver nas telas, mas também é um espaço físico, quer dizer, que permite a mim, na qualidade de regra, rever o interesse das pessoas em se si organizarem. Porque com uma organização feita, é possível fazer tudo. Só para dar um... Ele, ele falou mais, mas acho que estas eram as ideias principais. E ele também fala também do facto da cabana ser transformada num espaço social, num, numa, uma, de ser o único espaço que tem eletricidade em toda a aldeia. Portanto, é o sítio onde as pessoas vão carregar os telemóveis. Também é um local onde as mulheres se reúnem para terem aulas de, de alfabetização. Portanto, tornou-se um espaço, e também é um espaço onde a comunidade se reúne para conversar sobre, sobre as questões da comunidade. E, portanto, acho que a ideia foi, portanto, todo o processo, tanto o, uma, da, uma das questões principais era pensar o filme, o filme documental de outra forma, isto é, não só irmos a um sítio e documentarmos uma construção que está a acontecer, ou pedirmos autorização para, para documentar um processo que está a acontecer, mas se nós criarmos esse processo e documentámos lo ao mesmo tempo, mas foi, criou uma, um um processo coletivo, não é? Que, uh, aliás, ele, ele, o Suleiman mais à frente fala também nessa questão de muitas vezes ele participou em cinema, em, 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 em filmes em que se tem que construir qualquer um cenário, por exemplo, e depois esse cenário é destruído outra vez. Portanto, toda essa economia não é do cinema, portanto, é refletida neste projeto. 
em que várias coisas são feitas ao mesmo tempo e elas completam-se e, 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 e mas, uma, portanto, aliás, como ele falou, o próprio câmara era um instrumento da construção e a, a própria construção, obviamente, também é, é o, o, o objeto da, do filme. Portanto, só para pensar, e obviamente em relação àquilo que o César disse, eu acho que há aqui uma, uma questão muito interessante que é a questão do ritual também. Que, tanto o ritual de construção, por exemplo, foi importante que toda a gente da, da Tabanca, portanto, da, da, estou a falar em português agora, se calhar devia mudar outra vez, não é? So one of the issues that was uh, very important was the fact that the all in the process of, of the of the construction all the community took part. For example, even the children in the two weeks, one day they were invited, all of them, to come and take a bit so a bit of mud in their hands and put it in the in in the in, to create the, the wall. So all of them had the, their hands on the on the construction, even if it, if it was almost a lot more symbolic. For example, the the moment where all the children have the that possibility. Also, all the women one day came and took the sand to make the ground. So they did that work, and it was also uh, mainly men worked on the construction, but also the children and also the women had a moment where they were invited to come and give their contribution and this becomes also this ritual of all of them having contributed to that process. Uh, so, and, and all these elements, and parallel to that, you had the two, what we call the two architects that were the elder uh, uh, person, Gibril and Mamadou, um, mainly Mamadou, uh, we, we invited him to make uh, um, interview where he was Re reflecting about this recalling of this traditional construction to the shelters that the, he was constructing during the war um, and uh, and uh, what he would do you know what kind of wood he would use so there's all these like moments of uh, where um, that are cutting the construction that is these interviews of with Mamadou where he's, he's kind of like recontextualizing Uh, the historical uh, importance of architecture, of traditional architecture during the 11-year war. Yeah, uh, so Marcella will now play a little bit of Beton and then we continue. So we take the films out of the way and then we, <laughs> we continue, it says. Yes, so um, I, I think that clearly after seeing the two, it, it's very clear that the, the mood is very different. I think that, uh, Felipe, you touched upon something that is very, very important, uh, which is the, the, the fact that the project itself became a social and a community project. And, and I think that this is also felt by the joy of, you know, everybody that is working there. Uh, and obviously, I mean, cinema is a collective, process, but very often when we're working in the art field, uh, processes are much more individual. So is that perhaps a way to kind of engage with the community, especially when we work in contexts such as this, you know, Guinea, 
uh, Angola, even Cape Verde, where there is such a detachment from the public or the communities and the production of uh, work or pieces or film. Um, and on the other hand, with with Cesar, I I I always get this image of the the empty buildings also in in Cape Verde. I know that your project is a continuation of a study on this. So the effects of gentrification, perhaps, or globalization. I don't know if you want to touch upon, because it's almost like the opposite of building a community is is sort of like isolating or, or tearing down the 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 community and the joy of, of contributing to something bigger? Well, um, before that, uh, I would like to, to speak uh, more a little bit, to explain a little bit the context in Praia. It's, uh, it's a bit different from that um, in Guinea-Bissau. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the common, the common um, thing between uh, the way they build in Guinea-Bissau and Cabo Verde. Both are very labor intensive, very human labor intensive. That's it. It's the same. Uh, but uh, in Cabo Verde, we build exclusively with cement. So that's why the word beton for us is cement. Um, whether you're rich or poor, uh, you build with cement. It's, it's, it's like a, a matter of, of uh, honor, of achievement. Uh, who can afford to build their, their, their house in one, two years, but uh, uh, who can afford to build their house in one, two years, spend like 15, 17 years building their house, but they, they build it with cement. So it's, it's very striking, this aspect of, of uh, construction work in, in Cabo Verde is very, uh, very striking. But even for the middle class, sometimes they, they are, they are over -ambitious, ambitious and, uh, and they dream about big houses and they start building these build these big houses, but then uh, at some point they 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 lose strength, as as we say here, they lose strength and they can continue the um, building the house. So uh, that's why you, you you see a lot of these big empty blocks, cement blocks. Uh, on the space. Some of them are empty, but some are not really empty. People, um, people are living uh, inside, just, uh, just in the part uh, which is finished, but all the rest <laughs> is like a, a, a skeleton. Uh, so all this uh, speaks uh, a lot um, about uh, the, the, the dynamics in these societies, the values that we put in the construction work. What does it mean? Uh, who, uh, who builds what and in what place? Who has the rights to build? Because that, that's a really uh, big question here too. I don't know if Guinea faces the same problem, but here we have this so-called uh, informal uh, uh, house housing, informal construction, which is a big part of the construction, like seven, like sixty to seventy percent of the construction in in, in uh, Cabo Verde and, and especially uh, the city of Praia is uh, is of. Uh, the so-called informal construction. So um, it's a, it's a very it's it's strong. It's a very strong uh, dynamic here in Praia. Uh, we could uh, talk uh, about a lot of aspects of this uh, phenomenon. Uh, 
because it, because it has a lot to say uh, about the, the, this phenomenon. Um, but you have asked a question, right? Did I respond yes. to the question or not? What, what was the question? I don't remember what was the question <laughs> anymore. <so>. Okay. <laughs> like, well, no, okay, I, I, okay. I, I think that the question was also was in the direction of uh, thinking almost uh, an opposite context of the one that Philippa worked. How then in a way, how, how this dynamic plays out, you know, between those invisible bodies that are, you know, the labor force, the workforce, and then those spaces that some of them are empty. You mentioned informal settlements, but there is also an issue that has to do with, um, um, I wouldn't say, okay, it, there is a democratization of, of of this process of construction because everybody's building in cement, whether you're rich or poor. But then how does this play out in terms of the dynamics of the city, particularly when perhaps these workers are actually working on bigger buildings, you have an issue with gentrification and who moves where in, in Praia? I, I know Praia a little bit, but not you know, with that detail. So. And I think that there is kind of a, a, an issue of, um, as you say, it's not the right to build, but also the right of being in specific spaces. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not sure if I understand very well the question, but uh, what I would like to, to talk uh, about is, mm -hmm. um, there are like two kind of dynamics of construction. The one mm -hmm. that is uh, more, uh, a capitalist uh, dynamic, uh, mm -hmm. which this which uh, this workforce is used, uh, mm -hmm. um, underpaid, uh, in poor conditions, etc., mm -hmm. etc. Et uh, but there there are the ones that are building this this big projects, mm -hmm. uh, whether uh, whether it's a, it's a hotel, a resort, or something else. And then there's the, the, the community dynamic, mm -hmm. which, is, which I find very interesting. And it's very interesting. And, and in this sense, it's much more like uh, the Philippa Cesar's uh, movie. It's a community dynamic. Everybody helps each other. Nobody is get, is get paid because uh, they can afford to pay the, the carpenter, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, um, it's a community dynamic. Uh, and, and as I said, if 60 to 70% of the city is built that way, in that fashion, uh, that means that 60 or 70% of the city is a collaborative uh, um, process. So this is, this is, incredible but then when the authorities comes with this um, this discourse of formal of rights of uh, you have the right and you don't have the right to do this and that you you completely forget this human aspect of uh, place making of city making and for me, it's one of, it's one of what I aim to, to, to at least show or talk about. I don't know if I can, if it's, if I have the competence to, to show it, but I'm aiming to show it because mm -hmm. it's, it's rich, it's powerful, but yet it faces, it faces the, it faces the, 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 the power uh, relationship with the institutions like the government or the municipality. And it's a, it's a violent uh, relationship. So Paula, it's, it's complex. It's very <laughs> complex. <laughs> um, yeah, I wanted, I wanted to go back to, um, to Philippa and Suleiman's film. And um, 
I think that besides the issue of the community in the process, that space kind of became a space for the community and it's used. Is it used until today? Do you know? It's just a curiosity. Um, yes, they, they even just changed the roof again uh, two years ago. <laughs> yes, it's completely you. And actually, they also had to repair once the, the solar panel, but it's completely functional. <laughs> And it's so many years already, 2014, no? Yeah, it's six years, it's six <laughs> years, yeah. Um, I think that what's, what, what's kind of interesting is, is to think of those processes as city making or place making, as, as Cesar was saying. And, um, but I'm also interested in this sort of community-based not community-based, but participatory processes, mm -hmm. where very often, I mean, even outside of, of the art world, as, as I was saying, you know, the, the population is excluded from big decisions. And um, wishful thinking now, I was wondering whether, for example, I don't know what, imp it definitely had an impact in the village, but whether on a wider scale, it would be a process that would be replicated. Um, mm -hmm throughout throughout the you know Guinea. I don't know if you had that experience or conversation. Yeah, I, I, yes, we are actually working on us on another building project. Um, but one of one of the things that I wanted to add also in response of the issues raised by Cesar, because I think it, it would make sense. One from one side, I mean one side is is that the people didn't didn't work for free. They were paid mm -hmm through the budget of the film, exactly what they would pay when they would work for each other, you know, inside, for example, each block uh, mm -hmm. of um, Adobe was paid as, but the price was the price of the community. So that was what the film production, uh, this was an, a very important ethical issue that I discussed with, uh, with Suleiman. And what we did is that he calculated exactly what we needed in order to have this kind of, because we were also doing a film, so it would be very unfair, I think, that we would not pay the making of the house. Mm -hmm. This is important. The other thing is also the issue that I think it's very interesting that happens also in this process of modernity, in like, there's good things in modernity, there's bad things in modernity. One of the things is actually to connect certain kinds of, uh, for example, connecting beton with kind of wealth or, uh, or mm -hmm. some kind of status uh, uh, that is acquired through the moment where you actually are using beton. Even if beton has to be imported, it costs a lot of money. It has to. Go, it doesn't. It, maybe it's not produced uh, in in Local. in Cape Verde. It's uh, so it's it's also very damaging in terms of environmental issues, and mm -hmm. also the fact that uh, as the knowledge, the, often the knowledge that of the construction that is in the place, for example, how to use certain stones in case of Cape Verde in the construction that actually helps, you know, like in as many, many, many benefits. But all this knowledge, this kind of traditional knowledge gets kind of uh, um, pushed away through the process of modernity and what modernity actually brings in terms of the status where these materials. Mm -hmm. And what is very interesting for us, for example, while maybe the most the top architects you know like in the western world are actually all already returning to the natural materials and also seeing you know like how these materials actually have qualities that are fantastic and also they are analyzing them from the other side we have these situations where modernity arrived only at a certain point and created exactly the knowledge of you know this knowledge that we were like trying to access again uh, uh, there uh, uh, like bringing it back and celebrating it and seeing also how um, it it brings uh, um, positive you know like community um, uh, mm -hmm. and and also it's 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 a natural I mean Adobe is a natural uh, uh, material, material and local yeah. material so I think these issues are very important to understand you know, the, the kind of an alienation that the process of modernity, while, when they are not, uh, you know, in this kind of process of awareness as well, and awareness of your, and, and also securing your, like, 
uh, giving um, self-confidence about your own knowledge, about your traditional mm -hmm. knowledge, and also the fact that you can pick up this traditional knowledge and make it uh, future, future, mm -hmm. you know, high tech technology, you know, and this is a little bit what we, for example, in this project that we are working now is exactly this, what we want to bring up, you know, like how, uh, and also to make people be um, in this process of like being self-confident about what they have and what they know and what they can actually do with the, the little they have. So just, yeah, no, I think that you raised an important point, but mm -hmm. go ahead, Cesar. Uh, well, Paolo, let, let me just correct one little thing. Um, in fact, there is money in this uh, communal uh, process of, of uh, construction, but um, it's not the, the same amount of money that it would be required to elsewhere. Uh, in, an, in the other context. Uh, of course, there is money, but um, the, there is a lot of collaborative uh, uh, work. And what is interesting to remember too mm -hmm. is, um, uh, at least here in Cabo Verde, people occupy uh, spaces in, in families, in group of in groups of families. So, so uh, family is a very important core force in this process too. It's, a, it's an important element of survival too. Uh, another thing that I, 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 I find very interesting that Philippa pointed out is, the, is this uh, narrative of cement as a status that creates uh, a pressure uh, on, on people to build their house with cement, which costs a lot of money. So one interesting question that we, we, we could uh, raise here is what is the economic value uh, generated by, by this process? What does the, this contribute to the, to, to the GDP, for example? Right. Instead of yeah. you know, of the narratives of uh, informal, uh, illegal, mm -hmm. etc., etc., uh, we could instead uh, um, think about the value involved in this process. I want to just point this, point out these two uh, key ideas for me. I think that taking from what you've just said, I uh, and it's also a curiosity now uh, that I'll then connect with another idea. I wanted to ask you, Cesar, why is it that people only build in the town in cement in Cape Verde? Is it the cheapest material, the most available one, or? Well, or it's um, just the, the, in terms of skills, is what people know how to. To, to work with? It's a complex question. You have to ask somebody else. But, <laughs> <laughs> but as far as I know, uh, mm -hmm. it's very easy. It's an, a very easy um, uh, material to mm -hmm. get and construct. And, uh, and, and, um, and we don't have a lot of, of uh, other natural material too. Mm -hmm. We don't have wood, for example. Uh, we could um, build with mud or adobe, or but mm -hmm. it's not. It's not. Uh, it doesn't have the, the status that Cape Verdean like you know <laughs> we could we could talk about uh, Cabo Verde, Cape Verdean narratives of uh, of the best of that there, there's a lot inside mm -hmm. this this question but I think it's a mix of uh, of things it's mm -hmm. it's easy to get it's not very expensive it's not very expensive, uh, but then 
there are these, these questions of uh, status and durability, mm -hmm. uh, et cetera, et cetera. But um, as I said, it's a very complex uh, question for me to fully explain. Okay, okay. Uh, I wanted also to go back to what Philippa was talking about, uh, about the issue of modernity within especially these processes. Um, one, one of the, the interesting things as we were researching for the exhibition, uh, obviously the main theme because the project was developed under uh, the Venice Biennial 2014 theme of absorbing modernity was to understand this modernity as coming from the modern movement. So something that came from abroad that was absorbed in these countries and then translated into something else. Uh, but there is also then other narratives, which uh, I find more interesting, that it's to actually look at what was there in those contexts and what was already modern. Uh, and there is a modernity that is inherent in, uh, in, in these traditions, in this knowledge, um, that it's vernacular or not. I mean, it really depends on, on how we want to frame it and how we want to, to, to discuss it. So um, I find it really interesting then how uh, one can reflect back on these processes. Because at the end of the day, it really takes courage and the eye of somebody to say, look, this is already, this is already modern. And I think that there is a passage in the film that is way beyond. So whoever is listen, listening to us should, should go back and, and see where the architect is actually describing his process of construction during the war and how they would flee the, the bombardments. And that was so intelligent and so sophisticated that um, I wonder whether they actually, it's more like a rejection of this modernity that comes with uh, other materials, with status, with things, but uh, uh, looking back into what they have and, and, and actually this vision of, of this community, but also this unity between them, nature, the transformed and the natural that is already like extremely contemporary. So I don't know if you want to add on to, on to this. Yes, I mean, there's, there's also like uh, this process of the two weeks of shooting gave rise to this film, but also to two other little films that we did that yeah. one is actually, <laughs> but we were, we were so tense in the, you know, editing in, you know, in very few, mm -hmm. in very little time, you know, in, uh, um, that in the end we, we put these two other films not, and I, actually I always regretted that actually, it would have made the film longer, but I regret <laughs> that these other two films don't actually make the whole total because they, it, it makes totally sense. And one of them was an incredible, beautifully staged conversation, staged by Suleiman wrote it down. I mean, it came out of a conversation that was natural, but then we couldn't, we couldn't film it as we were like really wanting it. So we kind of restaged and, and uh, uh, Suleiman scripted it because he, he's a proper filmmaker, uh, fiction filmmaker. I'm just a documentary filmmaker. So he did that. And there's a little scene where um, the group of constructions are, uh, of constructors are actually taking, having their tea and start drawing on the ground. Uh, start discussing about between the round and the square house. The square house was brought by the, by the Portuguese, the round house was what was there before. And in this, in this village, almost all the houses are square now, but they were, uh, previously they were round like the one that we constructed. For them it was also like a kind of a time travel to a time, you know, when they were, um, when they were, uh, some of them Ha, you know, remember to see some of these houses, these round houses. But what was interesting in this conversation is exactly there is a negotiation about what are the social processes and that are happening in a square house and in the round house, and how they actually negotiate that when you have the round house, there you have the fire in the middle. Everybody has this little uh, sleeping 
so rooms around and and everybody's kind of connected so each person has kind of a connection to the other room uh, mm -hmm. and and they have the feeling that there's something like everybody can, is kind of linked and if someone is feeling bad you can hear and you can take it the square house kind of um creates a kind of more individual kind of situation like where each one in where the the, the 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 different rooms are not all connected with each other they are more connected mm -hmm. outside but not inside so when they were in this very beautiful kind of tea tea time you know um <laughs> where there's even a detail, I, I mean, where there's a little bit of a fire from the tea, uh, from the boiling tea that is taken to put inside of the drawing of it's really beautiful, like what's happening. And, and so this negotiation was very interesting because uh, they were fighting actually, like it, it was like two groups, you know, fighting one for the square house, one for the, for the, for the rectangular house. And I think, um, what I and back again to this idea of like what is modern and 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 mm -hmm. um, uh, and I think modern is exactly this moment or it can also be this moment of awareness you know like where um, you are reflecting on the processes that are at stake uh, through architecture and what actually it means how bodies actually move differently and relate differently mm -hmm. through the way architecture actually also. Um, conducts those relations and I think mm -hmm. this was one issue that uh, uh, made uh, kind of like a reclaiming a reclaiming of the modernity of the roundhouse and the modernity uh, like mm -hmm. the 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 so sophistication of mm -hmm. of that model of that house and I think this is the issue that I was talking about like how I, I know for example in Cape Verde there was a lot of stone construction for example uh, volcanic stone constructions uh, like I know it mm -hmm. from some films in the past but for example how um, exactly this process of uh, you know neoliberalism that creates you know the, all this kind of like and this happens also in Guinea Bissau you know if you have the money to construct a beton house you know like yeah I mean you are you know like you are the boss you know like it 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 had there's also this kind of status uh, thing but um but i think yeah there's a lot of to think there and how uh, this is um, you know like the you know capitalist and uh, and neoliberal systems where we are all con that are also contaminated yeah. this is like guinea or cape verde of course uh, there's exactly these phenomena that happen you don't know why but that kind of material, because it's connected with a kind of an economy that is an economy mm -hmm. of export and import, it's always linked to a kind of a status that everybody has, or, or like, and because the, everybody wants to belong to that kind of like status. So I think, mm -hmm. but are things that have to, that, that can be reflected and actually also can be uh, put it in a critical condition and, 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 and de deconstructed. And I think this is a little bit what we are trying to, to do in the projects that we do together. I mean, uh, me and uh, the group, the, you know, Suleiman, the Sana, the people that I work mm -hmm. with, and, uh, and some collectives. How can we actually uh, kind of reclaim some knowledge that is also incredibly uh, um, uh, valuable also for persons that are away from outside, you know, and, and how, mm -hmm. you know, how to reclaim those knowledges and make them from the future. Okay. Yes. Um, you in the beginning you were talking a, a lot about the body and the, the, the corporeal movement within this this city making processes or place making processes of construction, whether it is in the beton or as we've seen, it's also like within the economy of, of how these things are happening in, in the city. Uh, my curiosity, because I know that this is also work, a work in progress, that you're sort of continuing with this project, is coming from a uh, specific observation and is moving. How do you, for example, see yourself sort of within those processes, more as a witness or as somebody who will try to, to kind of move between the hardship dynamics of the, this invisibility and, and trying to make visible the invisible and yeah. 
the celebratory of the community life mm -hmm. how how do you see yourself kind of yeah well i see myself that that's a very interesting question i see myself as someone who is learning because what happens is uh, in our societies who is in the bourgeoisie part of it um, don't doesn't really know uh, the vernacular way of doing mm -hmm. things and the community dynamics etc etc mm -hmm. so for me it's amazing how we we didn't know about all this and and right now i'm in the process of learning and i'm in the process of translating these dynamics to my milieu that's why uh, i uh, i've carried out the the, the work spasus vacillantes which uh, was in the um, in a more middle upper class uh, area of the city because um, that's something i want to to i want to break this uh, this um, how i call it um, because we have the tendency to to look at the other mm -hmm. and i'm trying to look look our at myself or ourselves mm -hmm. Yeah. In, in the area that where I inhabit mm -hmm. and, and to, to understand. Um, so I'm, I'm trying to, to, to understand this dynamic in one part of the city to try to, to talk about the other part of the city. So mm -hmm. I see myself in this, um, in this translation process. Mm -hmm. And at the end, I'm trying to figure out it's not so much uh, different one from another. One has a different uh, narrative, a narrative of proper, modern, and uh, engineering and uh, architecture design, etc., etc. And the other has another set of narratives. But at the end, they share. They share. Uh, values and uh, uh, they, they share things. So I see myself in this in this um, in this zone, and I I could apply this same process to speak uh, to talk about a lot of other things too mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. these two dynamics, very very distinct in our society. Okay, we are pretty much reaching uh, the end, and so I wanted just to ask if you have anything else you wanted to add. Um, I think that to me, what's also fascinating is is again this sort of uh, processes of working more than the actual pieces, of course, but how one as an artist engages in those social political issues but with a kind of more of a performative act that re reverberates directly within the, the community where these things are being uh, shown done um, so uh, one last question to at least to Philippa is for example uh, did you guys show this film back to to the community uh, Suleiman showed it, but in the little computer, and uh, I actually never, we, we, want, we were planning to, when we did this mobile cinema, we were planning to do it, and we didn't, we didn't manage, but I, I wish I, I go back, and, and uh, because we are also like trying now to, I mean, it's now three years postponed, because it, we had a lot of problems, but we are trying to create a little uh, center, I don't call it center, it's a space, where where uh, you know the minimum of you know production means and also like um uh, uh you know projection and so we are like mm -hmm. trying to create this space and the problem is that yeah there's uh, Guinea Bissau many things, yeah. has uh, <laughs> many political problems that 
makes everything very fluid and so mm -hmm. you have to um, be very patient and um, and they are very patient so like we will do it at some point and I hope then we have the means also that people can mm -hmm. see for example this film in, in a more but Suleiman said when he showed it in a little screen it was very people were very pleased to see themselves and they were very happy I hope we can also yeah. project it big it's very soon no, for sure. And I hope that after this pandemic, we can all meet and uh, <laughs> see, see, see everybody's work in the, in the bigger screen. Um, and uh, would you guys like to add anything else? Um, Cesar, do you want to add anything else? We're reaching the end. I'd just like to think I'm very curious to follow also Cesar's work. And yeah, thank you so much, Paula. It was a pleasure to be in touch again. No, thank you. Well, and yeah. uh, a big hug to Suleiman as well. Yes. Go ahead, Cesar. No, for, for me, Paula, um, this conversation um, highlighted how it's important to know each other. Uh, for yeah. me, the, the dialogue, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew already this, the, the, the wor this work. Mm -hmm. uh, of uh, Philip, I don't know much of your work, but this particular work I, I knew, and uh, it's it was uh, immediately very interesting. Uh, the, the how it relates to, to me too. Uh, now, now I'm finding that in Ghana people are doing the same thing that I'm doing too. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but we don't have a lot of opportunities to put this in dialogue yeah. and uh, so so thank you uh, Paula as a curator to bring everybody together and putting everybody together to to speak about their process and because it allows us to to learn more and to relate more to to others Thank you. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you to both of you. And I'll just add that the videos are all on and they're all open today uh, for another hour. So at the Angar Online. So if anyone wants to go and see them, it's the last chance before the exhibition finishes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, people. Bye, Philippe. Bye, bye Paula. Ciao. 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 Thank you, the team of Algiers. <laughs>